Hello and welcome back again to Archaeology 101. Today's topic I'll be talking all about Denisovans, the history of their research and what archaeologists are saying about Denisovans 13 years after their original discovery in 2010. So let's jump right into it. Denisovans were discovered in Denisova Cave in Siberia within the Altai Mountains. A finger bone of a, as of then, unknown human, what human it was the scientists could only imagine, was put through DNA analysis, and it came back with a rather strange result. It wasn't Neanderthal, and it wasn't Homo sapiens. So originally, it was actually dubbed Lineage X, until later analysis then gave it the name Denisvan, and it was concluded that this was a new species. And it's the first time a human species was ever discovered through DNA analysis alone. Everything else prior to that had been entirely through fossil evidence. As you'll come to see, there is very little fossil evidence of Denisovans left. There are only literal fragments of Denisovans left. There are a few examples on the screen. You see most of the fossils are tiny, with the exception of that mandible there, that right side jawbone. That's from Bashayirkas Cave in China, and that was originally found in 1980 by a mostly geological expedition. So it was ignored until 2019, until it was reanalyzed and put through proteome analysis. And during this proteome analysis, a proteome that matched one from Denisova three and doesn't occur in any other human species that we know of, uh, that came out in the results. So it's very likely that this is a Denisova jaw, which is really exciting. The team actually went back and did analysis on the sediments in the same cave, and they also found Denisovan DNA within the cave sediments. And cave sediment analysis for DNA has been done elsewhere as well, so it's really interesting to see how uh, evidence of humans are being extracted from, from the dirt without the need for a fossil. We're living in very exciting times. Slightly more tenuous evidence of a tooth from Laos came out in 2022 as well, and the team there based their interpretation of the shape of the tooth and assumed that because it looked kind of similar to other Denisovan teeth that this was also Denisovan. I would be wary of this as it could be something else, but it is possible that Denisovans were in Laos as well. One of the most intriguing things about the Denisova cave is how it shows that humans were interacting with each other. Denisfer 11 is the key example here. Denisfer 11, also known as Denny, is about 90,000 years old, and it's a leg bone fragment. It was probably eaten by a hyena, judging from acid damage on the bone surface. Nonetheless, the archaeologists were still able to extract collagen for DNA analysis, and amazingly, they were able to get a whole genome from this. Usually, when looking at DNA analysis, you only get half the genetics. You only get the mtDNA, which is the mother's side of the DNA, which is hardier wearing than the male side, also known as nuclear DNA. But su quite surprisingly, it turned out that Denny had a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan dad. And we wouldn't be able to tell this if we only had half the genetics. You'd probably only be able to say, Neanderthal mother, this is a Neanderthal, but no, Denny is a hybrid. Another potential specimen is Dragon Man, or Homo longi. This is a Chinese fossil, and it was originally discovered in 1933 by a Chinese labourer who had been forcibly conscripted by the Imperial Japanese Army to construct a bridge over a river during a Chinese and Japanese conflict. He recognised that this was very important, and he didn't want the Japanese to find it and destroy it, so what he did was he threw it into an abandoned well to preserve it. He wouldn't tell any of the later authorities about it, because he didn't want anyone to know that he'd been tied to the Japanese forces, because he may well have been either imprisoned or executed by the authorities. But on his deathbed, he told his children about it in 2018, and they went back and they dug it out of the well and it was still there and as you can see it's in a remarkable condition despite it's being thrown around a fair amount. The Chinese scientists they named it a new species, Homo longi. It's about 146,000 years old but speculations from Western scientists is that perhaps this is actually the face of a Denisovan. 
the Chinese authorities won't allow for any DNA analysis on it because they think that it may destroy the fossil. DNA analysis is a destructive technique after all, and I do have some sympathy, but we are this close in deciding whether this is a the face of Denisovans or if it is indeed a completely different species. So do we have any idea what Denisovans look like? The fossil evidence alone is pretty much useless. All it does is show that these were a generally a robust species with large teeth, and that does fit in with the contemporary species like Neanderthals, not so much anatomically modern humans, which were more gray-sided, but overall a robust species. So DNA has had to do the heavy lifting here. DNA methylation was used on Denisova three, that finger bone. And what DNA methylation is, is looking at cytosines to look at the expression of genes. And the idea here being, if you can look at gene expression, you can see what type of physical traits that fossil might have actually had, even in the absence of a full skeleton. And what they came up with was a species which had a wide pelvis, large rib cage and joint surfaces with a low forehead and a broader skull than Homo sapiens. And that's, that's pretty good. What I will say is though that in their discussion they said that they used chimpanzee controls and they only achieved 85-ish percent accuracy, which doesn't fill me with a great deal of hope that how accurate this is, but it is way better than alternative, which is nothing. And it does seem like they have made a fairly accurate picture of what Denisovans would have looked like. And they actually did a reconstruction as well, which you can see in the bottom corner. And that does fit in with the other studies which suggested that Denisovans had dark hair, dark skin, and also dark eyes. Thanks to the high quality of DNA analysis on Denisovans, we're able to get a pretty good picture of their evolutionary history. Denisovans and Neanderthals share an ancestor, and that's split from a lineage which is shared with us, and that happened around 800,000 years ago. And that ancestor would then go on, go on to split into Neanderthals and Denisovans around 650,000 years ago. Denisovans would then go on to interbreed with another unknown human lineage, and one suggestion is Homo erectus, and this probably happened in Eurasia. So it's likely that the ancestor of Denisovans and Neanderthals came over to Eurasia and then split there. And this also probably is why Neanderthals are more closely related to us than Denisovans are to Neanderthals. There are at least two major interbreeding events between modern humans and Denisovans in Asia. But there's all sorts of genetic mixing, as we've discussed, like Denny, that hybrid sort of really goes to show how much interbreeding went on in Siberia. It seems like quite a wild party going on of all these different groups of humans just mixing and changing their genetics. And this is still affecting us today. Genesis has shown that there are still some modern human populations that have a small percentage of Denisovan DNA within them. And this is mostly within Australian populations and Melanesian populations. Modern Melanesian populations from New Guinea were shown that 4 to 6% of their DNA actually derives from Denisovan. So this is DNA which is over 50,000 years old. And there's some quite interesting research which is going on in Denisovan DNA, which is actually helping progress biomedical science. They're looking at peptides and how these are impacting our lives. For example, one peptide is shown to have antibacterial properties against skin infections, and that would be a really useful tool in being able to turn on these peptides so that we gain this antibacterial property. And the science behind this is real, it's called de-extinction, and they're able to do this by inserting peptides into mice and testing out the functionality of the peptides, and then they might be able to extract this later on and then reinsert it into a future human population. So even though Denisovans are gone, they're still impacting us today. Keeping in with the theme of having zero evidence about anything the Denisovans were like or did, their culture and technology is equally ambiguous. In the early levels of Denisova Cave, way deep down, some Lavalois and discoidal tools were discovered, which you can see on the right-hand side there. 
these are fairly typical chopping sort of tools, processing tools, and any species could have made these. These are fairly basic. The only thing about them is that they're, they're not bifaces. They're not bifacial tools, so they probably weren't made by modern humans in the Acherlian culture. These are either from Denisovans or Neanderthals. Later on in the cave's history, these bored and shaped animal teeth and bone and stone tools were discovered. You can see that these were probably pendants of some kind. And these were dated to around 43 to 49,000 years ago. This is a very late date. And in fact, this coincides with the end of the Denisovan uh, realm of influence over the Denisovan cave. So it could be that these are actually modern humans, evidence... We know late Neanderthals in places like Gibraltar were doing some pretty funky things with cave drawings and shaping eagle talons. So it is likely that Denisovans were able and did make a personal adornments. It's just tying the species to these fossils has been very difficult. And it could be one of the three species, whether it was Denisovans, uncertain. As with anything to do with archaeology, especially things in deep prehistory, there are always going to be issues with interpretation, especially when it comes to Denisovans, because we just have such little physical evidence to prove what the DNA is suggesting to us. The DNA, it has issues such as the ability to look at the Y chromosome, that male DNA. Y chromosome just break down over time, they don't survive as well as mtDNA, so we tend to not be able to look at the whole picture of Denisovans, only in a few rare cases like Denny, who isn't even a pure Denisovan, uh, have we been able to sort of look at any inferences from the Y chromosome, so always look at the DNA data and be like, ah, they've only got 50% of the data here, they've only got the mtDNA. Always remember that Y chromosome data provides equal amounts of di different data, and that's generally missing, and we don't quite understand how the Y chromosome has changed through the, the Denisovan's lineage. Main problem with DNA is contamination. Whenever you've got a DNA sample, it get contaminated somehow because it's been handled, it's been bagged up, they've been around in museums for a long time before they get to analysis, like the jawbone, for example, which wasn't handled until 1980. So contamination from modern DNA is very real. And although geneticists do really strive to go through rigorous decontamination processes, you do still end up with some level of contamination and all they do generally tend to state that in their papers you you can't always get rid of the doubt that that something has gone wrong and that you've analyzed modern human dna rather than ancient dna one interesting thing interesting thing i didn't consider until i read it was how caves move around caves are very active places geologically speaking and that does seem to disturb the archaeology as well. And there's a very extensive paper that was written in the last few years which looked at the sedimentology of places like for cave. And they came across with some quite worrying evidence that many authors have not taken into consideration how caves have moved around and how uh, layers of caves have been disturbed. And what they're suggesting, these authors are suggesting that there's really some worrying accuracies in the day of Denisovan samples and they might actually be younger or older in date or may not actually be related to Denisovans at all just because cave soils are just moving all the time and being disturbed by geological processes. Let's conclude Denisovans. Denisovans are another species in Middle Paleolithic Europe which is quite crowded now from all the species that have been identified in the 2010s, the early 2000s. Even though there's very limited fossil evidence of them, DNA technology is leading the way in helping us understand them. And what they've shown is that there's a lot of admixture of different humans, especially Denisovans, in both Neanderthals and modern humans, and probably as of yet unidentified human species as well. Denisovan DNA is also still impacting human population's health, as was shown by the peptides. And, and overall, 
it's a very complicated subject. DNA is always a complicated subject and geneticists never really make a good effort, in my opinion, to sort of bring their point across to anyone who's not in the genetics world. And I, I think it's high time that they did make a conscientious effort to do that because DNA is going to be the way forward for everything to do with prehistory and helping us understand past populations because most of the time it's the only way which is fair enough but they do need to make an effort at helping dum-dums like me be able to comprehend what it is they're actually saying so I can criticize it and to an extent this is happening with their own field there are discrepancies in dating and analysis of Denisovans like the sedimentology of Denisva Cave, that's a one to look at in your reading list. Please do go back into the description and there will be the entire list of the sources I've used to make this video and go in and make your own assumptions. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time on Archaeology 101.